Hey guys, Tactical Redneck here. So today we're going to talk about one of every redneck's favorite subjects, machetes. So I've had a number of them over the years, some of them, you know, nicer than others, some of them better than others, some of them not so much. All in all, I mean, I can't really say that I've ever found a store-bought machete that really suited what I wanted from it. So I've gotten to the point now I just customize all of mine and kind of do what I need to do to make them suit my needs. And I picked up, right now I've got three of these guys. This is a $5 machete that I picked up at a gas station in a town not too far from here. Uh, the town has a population of 154, I think. So it's kind of like a gas station slash convenience store slash tackle shop slash whatever else you need. But um, they got these in there for like five bucks. So I've picked up a couple of them. Um, this is what it originally looks like and this thing sucks. So the other two that I have, this is the first one. Um, and this is actually the first one that I bought from that gas station. Um, so I cut, I cut the blade down to a shape that I like a little bit better. I put my own edge on this so it's extremely sharp. Trust me, I know. Um, the black is just Rust-Oleum. And then I sanded down the whole uh, polyurethane off of the handle and coated the handle in boiled linseed oil. And I like that a lot more than that polyurethane so I've got this guy and I really like it and then I've got this one and this one is obviously you know I cut it down I cut it a lot shorter which kind of lessens the effectiveness of it but it's compact enough I can actually shove this in most of my backpacks so whether it's my everyday carry bag or, you know, my camping backpack or whatever, this will actually fit inside. And I did the did the edge myself, obviously Rust-Oleum and or sanded down the polyurethane and boiled linseed oil on the handle. So, like I said, I mean, this guy's not as good as this one just because of, you know, the length of the blade. It's not... It's not quite as good, um, but we'll take these out in the woods, all three of them, and um, let's go find something to hit with these things. All right. All right, guys. So this is a path that I use on a fairly regular basis, and this tree's always kind of been in the way. So do a little bit of test cutting on it here. Um, it's the factory factory version with no modifications whatsoever. So. got maybe a third of the way through that. Not much further. There we go. <clears throat> and that pretty much broke most of the way through. So you can kind of see here that cut that kind of went in a little bit and then all of this just sheared off just from basically blunt force trauma. So, let's see what our little stubby can do. Actually, where's that break out there? Yeah, that went straight through. So, right there. That was a clean cut all the way through. I didn't really even put much effort into that. Then <clears throat> we've got this guy. So I'm actually gonna move down here to this thicker section. Get these guys out of the way. And we'll see what it does. That <laughs> went through that like butter. Broke a little bit of the bark. But once again, you can see there, 
that was a clean, clean cut. So actually what I'm gonna do, So, this was the, the first one with the factory cut, and you can see what I just did with the good machete on the other end of that. And then this was the other one, and you can see the difference in the thickness between these two. This is probably a little over an inch, this is probably like three quarters of an inch. So, I mean, I'll take this over this any day of the week. And then, obviously, which one was it? Yeah, this one was the was the shorter, the stubby machete. So you can see those two are, you know, they're the same size. So, anyway, that's my take on machetes. You get one, don't be afraid to put it to a stone. Sharpen that thing up. It'll serve you a lot better. Anyway, that's Redneck out.